Welcome to another Beegraphy tutorial. Today, we'll create a simple, adaptable parametric design using Beegraphy's tools. Let's get started. The structure consists of three flower-like elements placed on an oval base. The base is asymmetrical, wider on one side and narrower on the other. Each flower-like element has three concave sides that meet at a single point. First, we'll grab the line SDL node from our library and drag it into the workspace. Create range input node and rename height. We'll connect a height node to the length input. Set the vector input's Z value to 10. The line will point straight up. To divide the line into multiple points, use the divide by count node. Create a polygon at each point by connecting the point's output to the polygon node's origin input. Create a range input node and rename it to radius for the polygon's radius. Create a range input node and rename it to count for the polygon's number of sides. Time to add some scaling. Search for scale and select the scale and U node. Create two range input nodes and call the first one scale X and the second one scale Y and connect scale and U to X, Y. To visually represent the relationship between the scaled polygons, we'll use a graph mapper node. Connect the divide by count parameters to the graph mapper node. Set the graph mapper type to Bezier for a curved line with control points. Let's extract the boundaries of our design using the bounds node. Connect the Y output of graph mapper to the bounds input for min and max geometry values. Use the remap numbers nod to remap the boundaries. Connect the scale X to the target max input. Duplicate the bounds and remap numbers nodes. Connect the scale Y to the second target max input. Connect the first remap numbers to scale and UX and the second to Y. Hide unnecessary geometries. To do this, select the corresponding nodes, right-click, and choose Hide. Let's move the inputs to the left to make it easier to change the necessary variable parameters later. Now we can create a surface using the Loft Surface node. Connect the geometry output of both Scale and U node to the Curve 1 input of Loft Surface. To shift the surface upward, We'll use the Move node. We'll use a Vector Y node to define the direction and magnitude of the movement. Create a Range input and rename it to Distance. And connect it to the Factor input of Vector Y. We need to hide unnecessary geometry. Let's create copies of our surface using the Polar Array node. Connect the Move's geometry output to the Polar Array's geometry input. Set the count to 3. Let's move the input back to the far left with all the other inputs. To get the base of the model, use the Curve Editor node. Adjust the curve shape by moving the points. You can close the curve by clicking on Closed. To change the curve's position, we'll use the Change Origin node. Set the X, Y and Z values of change origin to zero to move the grid to the center. Let's hide the original curve so that it doesn't interfere with us. To offset the curve, grab an offset curve node. Connect the curve editor to it. For finer control of the offset, add a list sequence and connect it to the distance input of the offset curve. We give the count three and the step two. To move the offset, let's add a move node after the offset curve. Create a vector Z and connect it to the Move node. Add one more List Sequence node. Connect List Sequence to vector Z. The List Sequence component will generate a series of numbers. Use the opposite node to move the offset in the opposite direction. Hide unnecessary geometries by hiding their nodes. We want that offset to be a surface. Add a Curve to Surface node and connect the moved offset curve to it. For thickness, use extrude surface and connect the new surface to it. To add the finishing touch, we'll apply a material to our design. 
Use the Apply Material node and connect the output of the polar array and extrude surface to the geometry input. Adjust the color, roughness, opacity, metallicity, and material type to achieve your desired look. Thanks for watching. We hope this tutorial helped. For more on computational design, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to get the notifications. See you in the next tutorial.